Hey, what is up, Flav City family? It's Bobby, and on today's basics, we're gonna make homemade ketchup. I'm so excited to share this recipe with you because it's crazy easy to make, and if you saw my Whole Foods haul the other week, you know I'm fed up. I'm fed up with these stores overcharging us for sugar-free, keto, Whole30, paleo ketchup. Case in point, the condiments aisle, right? Wait, me this. What are the differences between these two bottles? Well, I'll tell you. They're both organic ketchup. This one has sugar, this one doesn't. This one is $2.19, this one is $6. So they're basically thricing the price just because it's sugar-free and they can stamp Whole30, Paleo, Keto on there. Homie, don't play that game. I am not down with that. And it turns out homemade ketchup is so easy to make that when you put it in a cute old ketchup bottle like that, it's even more fun. So we're gonna make my straight up delicious basic tomato ketchup. It's organic, it's sugar-free, it's paleo, it's way cheaper, and I ain't gonna charge you a surcharge because it's keto approved. Then we're gonna take that ketchup. I'm gonna show you how to make my homemade special sauce recipe using it. It's kind of similar to the one they use over at McDonald's, except this one's actually good for you. So before we rock this recipe, hook me up, baby. Subscribe to my channel because every week we are rocking out some healthy, tasty meals right here on YouTube, and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, this is so simple. I'm so ecstatic to show you how to make it. The first thing we're gonna start with is organic tomato paste. This six ounce container is only 89 cents at Trader Joe's. I like to use my favorite one-handed can opener to take it out. This thing's a lifesaver. And then I have a small pan here. I'm just gonna scoop it right in here. Now we need some liquid love in there to kind of break up the party. So I'm gonna add one cup of filtered water. And then ketchup really is so simple. It's a balance of sweet, salty, and sour and spices. For the sour, I'm using my favorite raw organic apple cider vinegar from Trader Joe's. Although I found now they do have it at Costco and it's even cheaper. Maybe I'll hit that in the Costco haul video. Let's measure in a quarter cup of that. It's nice to buy the raw one with the mother because it has that probiotic mother down here which has really good gut healing properties and probiotics in there. So let's splash that into our pot here. And I'm gonna set it over medium heat. Okay, now let's get over to the sweetness. Um, I've been experimenting recently with different kind of keto sweeteners and I'm really digging right now monk fruit. Um, I would say that monk fruit and something called sucrin gold brown sugar which is like the closest thing you can get to a brown sugar substitute because it kind of has that uh, molasses-y flavor is the best for this. And I need five tablespoons of this. So I'm gonna measure that right in. I would probably not use like uh, straight up stevia because it has a little bit of a funky flavor. I would not use uh, Swerve for this. I was testing it with Swerve and it had like this weird cool flavor on my tongue. It was almost like I ate a whole pile of breath mints and I didn't really like it. So that was five tablespoons, right, Dust? I forgot. Okay. Thank you, exactly. <laughs> Clearly I'm not counting. Um, now, it's all about seasoning with salt and spices. So let's measure in a teaspoon of kosher salt. Uh, by the way, if you cannot get the monk fruit uh, near you, I'll put the Amazon link down below, but this one was uh, from Whole Foods. The bag was $10, and this is the most expensive ingredient in the recipe. Five tablespoons is $1.30-ish, um, but it's a must. It gives you that great sugar-free uh, keto sweetness. Now, for the spices, I have smoked paprika. Uh, most traditional ketchups use regular sweet paprika, but you know I love my smoked. A little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of cloves, and a little bit of cinnamon will go in there. Yeah, uh, it is, but actually, if you look at the back label of most ketchup, can you read that, Des? Most say cinnamon or allspice or ground cloves. So it's kind of like those things I like to say. Desi, what's my line about dessert spices? You like how they tickle the back of your... <laughs> tickle my taste buds in all the right places. Dessert <laughs> spices used in savory recipes tickle them taste buds in all the right places. Come on, that's one of my old school lines. You gotta know that, babe. Teaspoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of onion powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and then an eighth of a teaspoon each of ground cinnamon and ground cloves. All right, you guys, that's 
basically the recipe. Um, I'm gonna let that come to a simmer, put a lid on it and let it cook for 30 minutes, stirring it every five minutes because tomatoes love to splatter and make a mess. I was testing this the other day on the Flav City Instagram stories, which if you don't follow me on there, get over there because I share what I'm making for dinner almost every night. And I did two versions. I did this one and I did a version using 28 ounces of canned organic tomatoes. I did not like the texture and flavor as much as this. That reminded me more of like chunky monkey marinara sauce. This, once it reduces, is so spot on to the stuff out of the jar. It's unreal. All right, so let's bring that to a little bubble like it's doing right now around the edges and we'll come back in 30 minutes. All right, you guys, it's been 45 minutes total. Take a look in that bubbling pot of goodness there. So what I did was I cooked it for 30 minutes with the lid on and then I took the lid off for the last 15 minutes so it can reduce and get nice and thick. And if you're not sure, you know, it should have a pretty ketchup-like texture right now. It's gonna be a little looser. But how good does that look? Here's where you have a couple options. You can stop right now, you can chill it, you can eat it, it's gonna be delicious. But I want this texture to be as whipped, smooth, and creamy as possible. So I'm gonna blend it with my hand blender here or what Emra would call the boat motor. That's just gonna whip some air in there and make it ultra creamy and luxurious. Just blend it up. Now you guys, I highly recommend while it's cooking to check it for seasoning because when I was recipe testing, uh, it required a little more of this, a little more of that. You might like it sweeter, so you might shake in a little more monk fruit, but I checked it about 15, well, 15 minutes through and it tasted great. And now, oh, it's so good. You guys, it's the perfect balance of sweet monk fruit sour apple cider vinegar and just those spices tickling the old taste buds like i said perfectly whoa did you see that it just bubbled out of here harry potter style this ain't hogwarts all right you know what i'm thinking you guys also i have a honey bourbon barbecue sauce recipe that is epic from years ago do you guys want to see me make a keto version of that because the base of it is ketchup now that we have a money ketchup recipe, we can do it. So click that thumbs up button or leave a comment down below if you wanna see it. Um, I think that'd be absolutely epic. All right, I wanna measure exactly how much ketchup this makes so I can figure out the cost per ounce. Oh yeah, baby, keep going, keep going. Now as good as this ketchup is now, let it cool and put it in the fridge overnight. The flavors are gonna mellow and intensify and get even better then it's gonna taste absolutely great and you can store it in the fridge in an airtight container for three weeks or freeze it for a couple months. All right, what do we have here, Des? Well over a cup, no? Let me get another cup measure. Nothing like dirtying a second thing here. All right, that is one cup and just over a half. All right, so that's 12 ounces, you guys, for a price of $3.04. Let's just compare that. This bottle at the store is 11.3 ounces and it's $6. So less than half the cost for the homemade version. I knew it, right? I knew they were charging us for that stamp of approval for that whole 30 keto, paleo, gluten-free, vegan, all that stuff because they think we have disposable income. Now, like I said, goes in the fridge, gonna get amazing uh, after one day. But now that you have homemade ketchup, you can make my homemade secret sauce recipe very similar to the Mickey D's one, except mine isn't loaded with high fructose corn uh, syrup, cane sugar, and canola oil uh, mayonnaise. Blah! You make it by combining a third of a cup of avocado oil mayonnaise with three tablespoons of the homemade keto ketchup, add in one tablespoon of sugar-free dill relish, three quarters of a teaspoon of Tabasco sauce, a little pinch of salt, and a couple cracks of black pepper. Mix that up. You can put that on my keto shrimp burger recipe with jicama fries. You could also put it on my double cheeseburger turkey burger cloud bread bun. Absolutely amazing. You could also use it for my uh, ketchup glaze to go on top of my turkey meatloaf that's served with low carb cauliflower rice pilaf. Or I have a beefy prosciutto and cheese stuffed meatloaf uh, with a funky little side dish of broccolini and Japanese eggplant. But hey, this is it, homemade keto ketchup. If you wanna get fun, take an old bottle like I did, take off the lid, 
and put it in there. If you want to serve that to your kids, they'll think they're eating the really bad stuff, but it's actually the really good stuff. The recipe is down below in the description box along with the macros, the storage, all that good stuff. Uh, share this video, you guys. Sharing is caring. If you want to see a condiment series with mayonnaise and barbecue sauce and homemade relish and all that good stuff, leave a comment down below. Let me know. I got two more pretty sweet keto recipes going below me right now, but I will see you very soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, peace.